politics, religious, and cultural tribalism is brought home in the very next few sentences. A person comes and says they'll follow Jesus wherever he goes, and Jesus points out, ah, well, you know, most people actually won't. They have too many tribal affiliations, internal ideas about how things should be. They have kind of a Frank Sinatra version of faith. They'll have it their way. And so he says, foxes have holes and birds have nests. But the Son of Man does not. This is not a reference to people without homes, but a reference to a mission and love that is not bounded by human categories. So Jesus travels on and continues to invite people to follow. Ah, but they have other things they have to attend to, more important things. What's interesting, Jesus doesn't really judge them for this. He just continues on towards Jerusalem to pay the price of ultimate love for all people. And I think Jesus recognizes that humans have these kind of identities, that, that we choose holes and nests to live and work uh, the, the comforts of them and even the familial relationships and kinship that bind us over any universal sacrifice of Jesus for all people. In a long line of Christian thinkers, I'm proposing that until we can radically accept the message of Jesus and his cross for everyone, we will have a hard time a terrible time accepting it here for one another. If we cannot accept the personal sacrifice of following or giving up on our own individualism, giving up on nests and holes and our personal judgments of fire, we are going to continue to struggle. You see, we believe that God's love is not actually powerful enough to bring about true universal reconciliation and that there are sins too great for God to forgive that there are heresies so egregious that God cannot stand them that some blasphemy is so much that God has to close God's innocent ears and that some acts are so toxic that God's love cannot possibly burn it all away. But when we say this, we actually put limits on who God is. We're just making God one of us. And we're limiting God's love to those that we choose should have it. God becomes a giver of grace for my friends, for my loyalties, and for my political and social try. I think we just slip all too easily into believing in a God who's just not God at all. We slip into believing a God who is somehow limited like we are. We believe in a false God that says if we act socially correctly, and say the right words, then we will receive grace as if it's some kind of economic exchange. And then it becomes all too easily to feel righteous and justified in calling down fire on all those who don't live up to our individual or tribal standards. The hard part about the gospel today is God is not going to take your side. God is going to take God's side. The urgency is not an urgency of righteousness. 
It is an urgency to love. Knowing that not everybody will return that love, and yet the urgency is to love. To love and to love. To love till it hurts and it feels uncomfortable. And then to keep loving anyway. To grab hold of God's love in such a way to be willing to see that even those who would hurt us are loved by God. And that is a very difficult gospel indeed. But I believe in the Jesus who died on the cross and that my death is already buried there. And that no matter what this world brings to me or my girls or my family, eternal life is ours. I have nothing to prove. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.